that that probably by and far far away is is the most gritty group that I've ever been around. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Straight from the Source. I'm your host, Mike Cianciolo. We have a special guest today. He spent nearly four decades on the sideline of a football field coaching at the collegiate and pro levels. His head coaching record in the NFL was 500 or better in both the regular season and playoffs, while leading the Indianapolis Colts from 2012 to 2017. I'm joined by none other than Chuck Pagano. Coach, thanks for taking the time. How are you? Hey, I'm, I'm doing great, Mike. So uh, grateful and thankful for you guys having me on today. All right. Before we uh, really dig into football, I wanted to start off the field first. 2012 was a whirlwind year for you. First season as an NFL head coach, tasked with turning around an Indianapolis team that was coming off a 2-14 and season. Then you're diagnosed with leukemia. After missing 12 games, you make it back to the sidelines. What was going through your head when you found out, and how did your battle to reach remission change your perspective when you returned to coaching? Yeah, so obviously a wild wild time, wild ride, to say the least. Um, I'm looking over your, your shoulder there, and I see the Green Bay uh, poster up, and that was the first game that I missed, you know, when I was when I was diagnosed. But, yeah, th- at three weeks into the, into the regular season, um, you know, we lose a heartbreaker to Jacksonville. I go in, see the dog, got these bruises showing up, and then um, – you know, they said, okay, let's do some bite and some uh, some blood work because we had a bite fourth week of the season. And Mike, as you know, a sports fan, that you know, when the calendar comes out and the schedule comes out, you always look to see where that buy is. And yeah. you know, as a football coach, you want it somewhere in the middle of the season, right? Yeah. Beat up, guys are injured, this that, and the other. Everybody's tired, get a break, whatever. But this end up being kind of a blessing in disguise, having it uh, the fourth week. Otherwise, I don't think I would ever got in. And got I got checked out, but uh, yeah, right place, right time. Got the blood work back, and it's one of those things like, you know, cancer doesn't discriminate, right? It touches all of us in some way, shape, or form, and we never think, you know, you get you land your dream job after 20 years and 12, 13 moves all over, you know, you know, college football, pro football landscape down after town, city after city, and you get your dream job, and then all of a sudden you go sit down with an oncologist and he tells you you've got cancer, you've got leukemia. Um, luckily for me, it was APL, promyelocytic leukemia, very, very curable. Um, again, like I said, right place, right time. They didn't even let me leave the leave the hospital, so I could get checked right in. They start, you know, shooting antibiotics in me, chemo into me, put a pick line in, all that kind of stuff. But crazy season, you know, like you said, 2011, that job only opens up because Peyton Manning doesn't play. They go 2-14. and 14. Um, You know, I was at a great organization with the Ravens and just, you know, very, very lucky to to get an interview. We played, they, you know, we played the FC Championship game that year in uh, up in Foxborough when I was with the Ravens, the coordinator there and, you know, we win that game. The funny thing, Mike, is like I don't get I don't get the interview because it would have last you know would have gone two more weeks if we were playing in the Super Bowl, yeah. and they would obviously had to move on and, and hire a coach. So the stars lined up perfectly. Get that job, and next thing you know, you're you're fighting you know fighting cancer and amazing amazing story. You know what that team did. You know, in in my absence, because uh, they had us. Power rankings rank 32, you know, out of 32. We we put it on a T-shirt, back of a T-shirt, handed them out, you know, during training camp. It's kind of our motivation. At 31 teams in small, bold, you know, and then the all calf, big, bold was the Indianapolis Colts, right? So we used that as motivation and shoot to go out and, and win 11 games and, and make the playoffs, considering all the circumstances, adversity, obstacles, um, all that kind of stuff that was – it was a, it was incredible, incredible season. Now, obviously, everything then that was going on off the field, it was the the fine folks at uh, Indiana University's Simon Cancer Center that were able to get you back to business. Uh, the Colts helped launch the Chuck Strong Initiative uh, in 2012, which has since generated more than 15 million dollars for Indiana University Cancer Research. Uh, you and your wife were honored with the Chuck and Tina Pagano Cancer Research Fund, which was created in 2018 at IU's School of Medicine. How much joy does it bring you to see where this money goes uh, and the support you continue to receive from the Indianapolis community? It's incredible. You know, and 
I heard about Hoosier Hospitality. You've probably heard about Hoosier Hospitality, but until you lived it, like Tina and I lived it, it's just it's just incredible. And um, not too many places where you get fired, you know, and you still go back every year and you've got a great relationship with the community, with the owner, with everybody in that organization. Jim Ursay has been absolutely uh, incredible. Uh, one of the most generous human beings, you know, that I know. So, you know, my legacy was all about, hey, going through this cancer journey and then the Chuck Strong initiative and then the money that we raise, every penny goes to cancer research directly, all the overheads taken care of. You know, if that's your legacy that you were able to pay this thing forward, so many people reached out to me that I didn't know during my circumstances, but that encouragement, that support, the thoughts, the prayers, all that kind of stuff, it, it was, it was it, you know, the chemo I had to do, the drug, all that kind of stuff, but that was the best medicine that I could have ever received. And to be able to pay that forward, me and my wife, we just, you know, completed our 12th annual, you know, Chuck Strong Gala there. Andrew came back. Andrew hadn't been back in Indy since, you know, 2019 when he retired. So having him back, uh, it was it was just incredible. So to be able to continue um, this relationship uh, that I have with uh, the IU Simon Comprehensive Cancer Center there in Indy, uh, the great folks and uh, people at the Colts and and everybody in that community is is uh, is just a it's a it's an absolute you know honor and like I said, my legacy had nothing to do with wins and losses or anything I did on the football field. And it was all about you know the impact uh, that people had on me and then that we were able to uh, have on others that are battling and and I'm good with that. Right. Uh, so your philanthropy has led to being named honoree of the National Italian Invitational Golf Tournament for Charities this August 2nd through the 4th in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Uh, past NII honorees with the football background include Baltimore Colts great Alan Amici and Mr. Patriot himself, Gino Capaletti, among others. What does it mean to you to be recognized by the NII and what does it mean to you to be Italian-American? Well, it means the means world to me. I mean, it was always about... Um, at first, that list, like when when Bill Carollo reached out to me and then I talked to Joe, it was like, you guys got to be kidding me, right? <laughs> I'm looking at all the names on this list and my wife's even messing with me like, you don't belong on that list. <laughs> and they would post, I just Joe DiMaggio and you mentioned the great, you know, Alan Amici, um, you know, the great Wisconsin back and uh, all that kind of stuff is like, holy crap, I can't believe I'm even on this, you know, having it opportunity to be on this list but it's a very humbling um heck of an honor to say the least but you know just growing up in an italian you know family um the sunday pastas the family around you know the pride that we took uh in our name in our heritage uh you know where our our you know ancestors came from where our forefathers came from you know my dad's from Pueblo, Colorado, and everybody thinks you got to be from New York, right? Because I, when I travel, you know, especially when I was working in the league office in, in 18, the year I set out, 2018 with the officials, you know, every time I go into New York City, it's like, Pagano, hey, you know, you know this one, you know that one, are you, where are you from? Are you from the Bronx? Where are you? From? And I'm like, no, I'm from Pueblo, Colorado. They're like, there ain't no Italians out there in Pueblo, Colorado. But yeah, my dad's family, um, his parents came over from Luca. There's a couple Lucas. There's, but this one's down in Sicily, uh, just outside of Sicily. And uh, it's funny because he he was coaching uh, in Bergamo. Uh, uh, they had a European uh, league over there, so he was in Bergamo, won a championship over there. My dad Sam, and then he went to Paris for a couple of years. But he would go back and visit. And it's funny because all the Italian people that he grew up in Pueblo, all the names he would go around and he'd see all those names, you know, sit, you know, in Luca, and uh, so it was. It was always, you know, faith, family, and football for for me, and and to be able to grow up like that, um, it was, uh, it was, it was just, uh, it, it was incredible, and it was, uh, like I said, it was always about the name on your back, the pride, taking pride in that, um, our work ethic. The way we took care of, uh, you know, one another, community, family, um, that whole deal—it's it, pretty, 
my my mom, you know, I got a little bit of Slovak in me. I don't ever claim that because all if I do, we always do want to just claim the Italian, right? Yeah. Uh, so that makes you Sicilian That's- then, right? All right. Me yeah. Well, um, th- uh, st- sticking with the NII, I know uh, I know you like to golf. Uh, what kind of round do you think you'll turn in at the Grand Geneva Resort in August? <laughs> That's a great question. I've been playing um, a lot of golf since the weather turned out here uh, in Boise. So you, you never know. My game is, I mean, probably like a lot of a lot of our games. Some days you're really on. Um, some days you're not. So hopefully I can represent and and help whatever team I'm on, you know, win this thing. I don't know if there's prizes. You know, I'm sure they give out give out some prizes. Um, I'm looking forward to the bocce, you know, yep. the bocce ball journey on on Friday night as as well. So hopefully I can I can represent and, and post a decent score. There you go. Uh, well, from the golf course back to the gridiron. Uh, dating back to 1984, you were a coach with 11 different programs or franchises <laughs> across the NCAA and NFL. It added up to 36 years of coaching. You're a big fan of grittiness of every team you've ever been a part of. Which one stood out to you as having the most grit? Man, that's a that's a great question because uh, I was a part of some really really good football teams. I think back to you know my days in in Miami uh, when I went back with Butch Davis. We were there from 1995 to 2000, but that and had to kind of rebuild that that program but that that 2000 team um we went 11 and 1 beat florida in the sugar bowl finished number two uh in the country ed reed reggie way i mean we had an all-star cast and then you know butch took the cleveland job we went to i went to cleveland with him and, and if he didn't lose for another two years won a national championship should have won another one that was a pretty damn gritty team that ravens uh program that I was fortunate to be a part of with John Arbaugh, that 2011, you know, defense with Ray, and Ed Reed, Jared Johnson, Alodi Nada, Suggs. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, that was that was an incredible group of, of human beings, men and, and football players. But probably the most got to be, you know, that 2012 group. You know, considering what we what we went through. Um, the circumstances coming off a two and fourteen season, pick you know thirty two out of thirty two. They would blown up the whole organization, so it's rookie head coach, rookie quarterback, rookie GM, and Ryan Grigson. You know, all, Peyton was gone, Dallas Clark, Jeff Saturday, Gary Brackett. They, I mean, they won more games in that that era of football than anybody else. More 12, 13 win seasons, and then so to be able to to go through what we went through and then coming off of that, that 2011 season and, you know, seven fourth quarter comebacks by, by Andrew Luck and his, his teammates and Vic Ballard, Donnie Brown, Robert Mapp, this Reggie Wayne, you know, starting with that amazing comeback down 18 to Green Bay that first week that I missed that, that probably by and far, far away is, is the most gritty group that I've ever been around. You rattle off a bunch of great names uh, of players. Is there any one that you feel embodies grit the best? Man, I I get in trouble. My phone will start blowing up. Like I, I name. You don't have to answer. You don't have to answer. I name one. I name one my <laughs> human being, Mike, and then somebody's gonna go. What the hell? You told me I was the grittiest some bitch you ever coached. You know, I'll, I'll, <laughs> so I I was blessed to be a, a around a, a bunch of really really good good players better people and and uh guys that you know knew what grit was all about perseverance resolve all that kind of stuff so uh you've been involved with the media since retiring from coaching following the 2020 season uh you're a regular guest on uh, one of your former players uh with the pat mcafee show uh there you go you got for the brand right there on the shirt how do you view your role and impact for what has become arguably the most popular sports talk show available First of all, I just feel very blessed, you know, that had this, you know, relationship with with Pat. Um, obviously, he was our punter uh, until 2016. Walked in and si- end of 16 seasons, I'm retiring, and I'm like, "You're crazy, Pat. You can kick for another 20 years in this league and make, you know, X amount of dollars, right?" And he goes, "No, I can't. I can't be who I want to be. I got 
bigger and better plans ahead. I here's what I'm, and he mapped the whole thing out, right? So for us to be able to continue our relationship, you know, we traveled on a USO tour together to Japan, uh, Pat and, and a few of the other ball players, and Matt Conti, the sports information guy for the Colts, and spent a week, you know, traveling and really, really got deep into the weeds and got to know, you know, each other kind of just away from football, just as human beings. So I think we really bonded, developed a great relationship. And then being out of football since I retired, you know, in 2020 after the my final year with the Bears, you know, you can't replicate the locker room, game day, preparation, the grind. You know, we go from 100 miles an hour to retirement to zero. It's hard to fill your days and try to figure out what your purpose is. And so for, for Pat, to throw me a, an olive branch and a lifeline, so to speak, and and let me be a part uh, of the program, as he likes to to call it, the Pat McAfee Show. He's got an amazing group of of human beings over there, with the toxic table and AJ and and Tone Diggs and Zito, all the guys behind the glass. Darius Butler, I mean, they just do a phenomenal job. So, just to have this this small piece, this little role. You know, it used to be Coach P's keys where I'd imitate, you know, the head coach for each team that was playing on Thursday night football and try to give, you know, the viewers a behind the curtain kind of scene of what would a team meeting look like on a on a Wednesday, you know, lead up to a, a Sunday ball game. And, and and then it's kind of morphed into where I travel in and spend, you know, three hours with them on the on the step on Thursday. So it's it's my football fix. It keeps me connected to the to the game uh, keeps me connected to a, a bunch of people, and it is so much fun. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we 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 we've had some we've had some great moments uh, on there together, and just feel very very blessed and grateful to to have a small small role on such an amazing. It's incredible what he's done, right? I mean, the guy yeah. is just he's absolutely brilliant. Mm-hmm. He's he's a great human being. He's got a huge heart. He gives and gives and gives. Um, back to the people who got him to where he is today, people back in Plum, you know, Pennsylvania, the, what he's given back to that high school. But, yeah, it's it's an absolute blast. I know you mentioned uh, Coach P's keys uh, and how things have kind of morphed here. Is there any chance, I know a lot of fans really love that segment, is there any chance that comes back this year or at, at some point in the future? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It just because it's ever-evolving and it's ever-changing, so – I just kind of Pat's got so much going on, and I try to not bug him with with too much because kind of like the way his brain works, he'll come up with something and then you know it'll be okay. Hey, look, this is what we're gonna do. So um, never say never, right? Never say never. Maybe maybe something like that uh, comes back, but it's it's fun being able to still break down that Thursday night game, talk about a little bit, talk about everything. It's broadening my, cause I've got to now pay attention to hockey. Like I, and I, they got me watching hockey games really hard for me to watch baseball. I'm not a baseball guy at all. So, okay. but um, yeah, I'm, I'm figuring a lot WWE back watching that stuff. So we'll see. All right. Well, I want to wrap our time here with some fun rapid fire questions. Uh, since we were talking about you being this year's NI honoree, I'll make these Italian themed. Are you ready? Oh, All right. Well, we'll start off with a couple. I love, I love these. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start off with a couple curveballs. Um, who do you oh. prefer for singers, Pavarotti or Bocelli? Andre Bocelli, hands down. All right. For sculptors, Donatello or Michelangelo? Michelangelo, David, all time classic. All right. Uh, which car do you like more, Ferrari or Lamborghini? I wouldn't have any. I've been. I've walked. Around. A lot of players that I coach had had those. Um, probably if I had to pick one, probably a Lamborghini. All right. More iconic: the Coliseum or the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Coliseum. Oh, All right. Better move: yeah. Godfather or Goodfellas? Oh man. And you could pick whichever Godfather I mean, I, you I, want I, if you go I, that I, way. I love them. I love them both. You know. Um, James Caan and that I mean hard to beat the the Godfather Goodfellows was incredible but I gotta say Godfather respect 
Uh, Michael <laughs> Cornell. <laughs> yeah. uh, better quarterback, Joe Montana or Dan Marino? Well, if you just look at Super Bowls one, you got to go with Joe Montana, right? Danny Marino was an unbelievable player, obviously, but no, su- no Super Bowls, right? I don't think he g- did. He get the one? No, he, he went part of that seventy-two. No, no, so no Super Bowls. Joe Montana's got a million of them. So Joe Montana. All right, uh, and he's Notre and he's Notre Dame guy, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you call it Capicola or Gabagool? A gabagool? Are you kidding me? <laughs> The gabagool. All right. Uh, better dessert, tiramisu or cannoli? Oh, cannolis all day. I was just talking to my dad this morning about Luca and about food and family and everything, and he said the best cannoli I've ever had has come out of that uh, that area. So I got to go cannoli. All right. Uh, favorite flavor of gelato? Wow, I like Spumoni a lot. No, gelato, <laughs> probably coffee. Okay. Uh, favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. Favorite type of pasta? Uh, rigatoni with a nice bolognese. All right. Uh, well, that- pasta, so the vodka, vodka sauce is my second. But we make a great, my wife and I, we learned a long time ago how to make the homemade meatballs. And we make our own sauce, so uh, yeah, I, I like a good bolognese. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, well, that's no. what I got for you. Uh, that was great. From one pies on to another. Uh, thank you for your time, you, coach. You were, <laughs> you were gonna ask me about famous Italian politicians and no. stuff. I would have been a, no, no, I've been in trouble. No, I try to keep it fun and light. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you, coach. We appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you for having me.